recently I was watching TV and these programs came on that reminded me of things in the Bible and it reminded me of how the young people are today and I want to show you these clips. Oh God, speaking about God, um, I've been asked to preach in church this evening and I'd like you to come, son. You know I won't come. Yet, every day for two years, you still ask me. Dad, this is 2020. Nobody really believes in God or his son, Santa Claus. You know, long before the young people started acting the way that they do today, I knew it was coming because I understand prophecy and I believe the God of the Bible. I acknowledge the God of the Bible, all right? I'm not a Gentile. And oftentimes you've heard me say that Christians are Gentile because Gentiles don't acknowledge the God of the Bible. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of examples right now why Christians don't acknowledge the God of the Bible. Dad, this is 2020. Nobody really believes in God or his son, Santa Claus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. That's what I said. Santa Claus, Jesus, potato, potato. You know, the young man basically said that Jesus and Santa Claus is the same individual. In other words, Jesus is fake just like Santa Claus is fake. And in Jeremiah the 10th chapter, it specifically describes what not to do. It says the pagans do this. That's one of the, the other definitions of a Gentile. Gentile is a pagan and a heathen. Anyway, in Jeremiah 10th chapter, King James Version of the Bible says, don't do as the heathens do, for they fasten the tree with the nail and the hammer and all that type of stuff. Go read Jeremiah the 10th chapter yourself in the King James Version. You'll find out that God, prophets, and everybody else in the Bible said, don't deal with the Christmas tree and that celebration. But nevertheless, it's one of the biggest holidays of the Christian religion. This in itself shows you that Christians don't acknowledge the God of the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible where it specifically says to deal with Christmas, be a homosexual, eat pork, or none of that other st type of stuff. I always say there's three types of believers. There's a non-believer, the true believer and the Nate believer. And most people are Nate believers because they want to walk around talking about I'm saved and sanctified. And they haven't followed none of the instructions in the Bible in order to become saved and sanctified. They just want to say I'm blessed and I'm highly favored and all of these common Christian terms to make you think that they've done something or deserve to for any of this type of stuff to happen. The way that I see Christians are some of the laziest people on the planet because they expect to get everything and do nothing. They say all you gotta do is believe on God and you're gonna be saved. Why? Saved from what? Saved from damnation? Pagans ain't gonna be saved from damnation. What I would do if I was a Christian, I would stop and take a look at myself and save myself from this untoward generation like the Bible says. Rather than waiting on Jesus, a dead man, a pagan God, because Jesus ain't nothing but Zeus. If you listen to me before, you've heard me say this, and I'm not bashful about it. I tell you like it is because I'm trying to help. You're just too big a fool to realize that I'm trying to help you because it's easier to stay around a, a bunch of people that's lying to you and telling you things that you want to hear and all this type of stuff and telling you that God will take you any kind of way that you are. The God of the Bible don't take you any kind of way that you are. This Christian generation realize that God won't take you any kind of way that you are. They sitting back and they watching all of these freaks telling your children that they can call themselves whatever they want to be. If they're a boy, or if they got a penis, they can call themselves a girl. If they got a vagina, they can call themselves a boy or a trans or some other freak of nature that God did not create. That's the monster that the Bible is talking about. I've gone, I've gone over all this type of stuff before. You can go back and listen to some of my stuff. Most of you ain't gonna do it anyway because you don't wanna change. But see, all of this stuff has gotta take place. All these young people that don't believe in the Bible will soon believe once they start to see these things come to fruition that's written in the Bible. I already know they're coming. I've already seen a lot of them take place. All of this stuff 
that people are doing right now has got to take place before the kingdom of heaven can be established on earth. So if the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on earth, why is everybody trying to go to heaven? You know the only one that was trying to go to heaven in the Bible is Satan. So if you're a follower of Satan, you're trying to get to heaven. It's plain and simple. I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but if, if I step on your toes, you need to get your toes out the way because I'm not going to tell you nothing but facts. Now for those of you who are still with me, I want to show you another clip. Proof that Christians don't acknowledge the God of the Bible. Okay, watch this. All right, First Lady. No, no, boo-boo. She's Pastor Greenleaf. She's no man's First Lady anymore. <laughs> <laughs> See, in Hollywood, Hollywood always used these stars to try to make a point. The stars in the heavens influence us in a lot of different ways depending on the degrees and the positions and so forth and so on of the stars. Matter of fact, most of these Christians don't want you to deal with any type of astrology because they say it's black magic and witchcraft and all that type of stuff when that's absolute nonsense when the God of the Bible describes some stars for you and what they're supposed to be for you. They're supposed to be a sign. What kind of sign? An astrological sign. I'm not going there right now, I want to make this point. Hollywood want to use their stars to make these devilish points to you, to try to distract you, to try to deter you from using the powers of the God of the Bible so that they can continue to, to control you. It's all the control mechanism to get you under Christianity so you have no God to defend you so therefore they can do whatever they want to do to you. Just look at it for yourself. All those people that's calling on Jesus and calling on God when they get in distress, who come to their service? Nobody shows up. The angels that was assigned to these people at birth don't even show up because you done ran them off with your folly. Quit being ridiculous. Look at things for what they are. Look at things, the Bible said, let us reason together. Not listen to no foolish about somebody died for you 2,000 years ago. Now you ain't got to do nothing because Jesus done it all on the cross. Quit being a damn fool. The ones that's making up all of this stuff is sitting back laughing at you. Quit being ridiculous. They put Patty LaBelle on here to promote some of that strong black woman agenda. Whereby, if you watch this series Greenleaf, you'll see that uh, this woman that's referred to as pastor, which he shouldn't be referred to as pastor, according to the Bible. Patty just referred to her as pastor to promote this strong black woman agenda, which this strong black woman just lost her husband, and Patty lost her husband a long time ago because they want to be strong black independent women. Quit being a damn fool. God didn't make the woman and the man to support each other for nothing. One can't do nothing without the other. The one deals with the left side of the brain, the other one deals with the right side of the brain. In order to bring them into balance, you need both of them. But for some reason, after a certain point, the women want to pretend that they don't need a man, so they go and they start acting crazy, and then the man want to get, get rid of her ass. Now she's a victim. The woman always want to, want to try to put herself in a position to be a victim, so everybody can sympathize with her and pity her and so forth and so on. Enough of the nonsense. It, the truth is, a woman ain't supposed to be saying nothing in the church, according to the Bible. Let me read that for you. I want to read from the King James Version of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the church, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, also saith the law. I'm going to go one more place to show you where women are not supposed to be pastors in church. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, and then we go into verse 12. It says, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Verse 12, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to assert authority over the man, but to be in silence. I got a lot of explanations why that's so, but you need to find your own examples of why that's correct and operate according to it. And I'll tell you something, if all of these Gentile pagan people out here that refuse to read the Bible for themselves, 
quit going to these women pastor churches, then it wouldn't be no women pastor. Matter of fact, a woman ain't supposed to assert authority over a man in no condition. At work, at home, and no other place. If you got a woman that's trying to assert authority over you, then you need either need to get rid of her ass, or you need to find you another job, or you need to do something whereby you can maintain your testosterone without it being challenged at every other flip of the coin. You heard it here first.